as our family pillars are the foundations on which many people choose to build on the family foundation. As we go through the pillars, you'll also know and you'll know yourself the foundation of your family. And that one will help you to know where we have very many problems in our families, depending with the pillars, depending with the foundations. Many foundations are not godly, they are not firm, all are man-made, they are all man-made. For example, we have cranism-oriented family foundation. Cranism-oriented family foundation. There are people who have not been taking notes since the first day up to now. I'm very sure that this one, you'll not be able to grasp it and maintain it. So just reason, knowing that uh, at the end of the lesson, it will be a great loss to you. Cranism-oriented family foundation. We have these foundations and I, as we say, cranzim, you know, cranzim, you know the cran. And uh, whoever is married in that clan will follow the foundation of that clan. And every clan have the uh, spokesperson, every clan. And every family is under, or it follows to under that clan. We have very many clans with the different rulership and kingship and tribesmen, we normally call them the kingmakers. Then uh, another foundation is community-oriented family foundation. We have a clan, but community is bigger. We have the rural community, the Kikuyu community. But within the Kikuyu community, we have very many clans, very many clans. And all the families that within these families have their own foundations. They have their own foundations and the family have their own bunch of rules that were formed many years back. And these we call them traditions. The traditions and they follow all these rules. They are those ones for a community and there are other rules for a clan. Then each clan, every clan has their bunch of curses. If you don't follow this, if you break this, you will be cursed. They have very many curses which are not written anywhere. And they keep these people following the rules of that particular clan and they have a lot of fear all through. So the community oriented family foundation then uh, after that, we have um, the tribal-oriented family foundation. That is the tribalism, the tribal-oriented family foundation. In the whole world, we have 16,800 tribes. 16,800 tribes. In Kenya, we have 43 tribes. In Tanzania, we have 125 tribes. In Ethiopia, we have 186 tribes. Every tribe has its own rules. Every tribe within the particular tribe have very many clans. And all these people, once you intermarry, there are rules from this, uh, this uh, clan and this clan. From this tribe, to this tribe, then they mix, and at the times, uh, they are, if they are not well learned and uh, they are not Christians, they get into problems, some of them. The tribal oriented family foundation, and within that, we have the Nairo Hamites, the Nairotis, Bantus, and other tribes, then we have a mixed family foundation that is uh, after living together as Bantus we buy, we buy from this tribe and from this tribe and our children then marry and they also have their other new 
uh, new rules from both communities, from both tribes. And this, we have the Rerism Oriented Family Foundation from different races. Every race has its own. Then we have Postmodernism Oriented Family Foundation. The Postmodernism, we normally call them the Raned, the Erit, the Information Age. And nowadays we have the Digital Class. All these, in most cases, have their own problems. They live, they struggle with life, and they continue. I don't have time to explain about the white races and the black race and the bushmen, Hortenton race, all this. If the Lord does not build the house, the work of the builders is useless. That is Psalms 127, verse 1. Just get that uh, scripture. If the Lord does not build the house, the work of the builders is useless. So the family pillars that I'm giving you, they are God-oriented. God-oriented farm family foundation. The rest are family foundations, but this one is God-oriented farm family foundation that comes and it covers our own tribal uh, family foundations. The God-oriented farm family foundation is very powerful. It succeeds only if you accept it for it. The family pillars are God-oriented and they stand firm through the test of time. The pillars that I'm giving you, they are God-oriented. They stand through the test of time. Pillar number one, I give it to you on Sabbath, the family worship. The family worship cut across all the other foundations. For your family to stand a farm, you must have that particular pillar, the family foundation. That is uh, family worship. Family worship involves Bible readings, singing, prayers, and time of reflection. You make your home and you make your family a little heaven on earth. By this, how do you make it a little heaven on earth? The family worship involves Bible readings. It's you, the father, to guide the entire family. It's you, the father, I told you yesterday that you are the pastor. Your wife is the church elder. Your children are the church members. And this one, it involves, the family worship involves Bible readings, singing, prayers, and time of reflections. Just get time to read the Bible with your children. Every man, you don't have any reason and you will not get any reason on earth. You cannot get any reason and you will not get any reason on earth that you didn't get time to worship with your children. Get time to worship with your children. Mom, take care of your children after preparing food. I've been mentioning this to you all through. Don't let your family take dinner. Don't let your family take supper. Don't give them food in the morning. Don't give them food in the evening before you do the worship, which is very necessary. Watch your time is really important to all family members. To all family members, watch your time. Don't take a lot of time studying with you or reading the Bible. The family worship is not a church worship. Family worship, or as you read the Bible in the family, that is not a church Bible study. You can take one hour in, uh, in the church for a Bible study. But family worship, just take 10 or 15 minutes. You sing, read the scripture, worship together, let them do the reflection if possible, 
Then you pray. It will be over. And that one is enough. Make it in the morning. Make it in the evening. And your, your family, the retro heaven on earth, will be blessed. Husbands, you are the head of this institution. It's a special institution. It lasts for years and for generations. You are there today with your institution, with three children. The time will come when you will not be in this world, but your children will be there. They will be also parents with their children. Their children are your grandchildren. They will follow the foundation of their parents, and the parents will follow the foundation of your or their parents who is you. Whatever you are doing in your home today, it will affect the first, second, and third generation. So you should be very careful, father, mother. This is an institution that is, that is always covered with the prayers. Parents, the word of God says, pray, 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 pray. Pray for your children. There is a book here that um, maybe before I read it, this, that I want just to, uh, to read this quotation. If there was ever a time when every house should be a house of prayer, it is now. If, if there was ever a time when every house should be a house of prayer, it is now. Father and mother, should often lift up their hearts to God in prayers for their children. In such a household, Jesus will love to stay. Jesus will love to stay. If you pray in your house all the time, angels will enjoy to be there. Jesus will love to be there. And in most cases, there will be no quarrels. There will be no fights in the house. There will be no name calling. With no prayers, you will be fighting every now and then. Jesus is the bread of life. And if he is in our house, there will be no any time that you will miss or lack. Because he is there to provide. So, Patriarchs and Prophets. That's a, that's a quotation from the book of Patriarchs and Prophets, page 144. In too many households, prayer is neglected. Parents feel as if they have no time for morning and evening worship. They go out to work as ox or house goes. Without one thought of God or heaven. Patriarchs and Prophets, page 143. Just for the sake of those who are writing. The first one is Patriarchs and Prophets. Page 144. And the second one is Patriarchs and Prophets. Page 143. Wale munaandika kwa simu mbebarikiwa. Wale munaandika kwa vitabu ni hariruya. Wale munaandika unandika kwa kichwa. Ole wenu mungu awasaidie. Just wait for the next seminar you'll be able to get. Suggestions. For family worship, have a fixed time for morning and evening worship. Have a fixed time for morning and evening worship. Note, time is very important in the family. Make use of time in your family. Budget your time as you budget your money. Father, all in his absence, mother, to read the devotions. Father, that is your work. In your absence, let the mother read the, the devotions. There is no excuse. Unless both of you, you are not in. But if, if you know that you will not be in, organize and fix one of the children to read the rest. Before leaving the house for work. All families should be called together. And the father and the mother, the father or the mother, in the absence of the father, 
should plead with the God to keep them through the day. Child Guidance, page 519 to 522. Suggestions. Have fixed time for morning and evening worship. Let the father read in his absence. Let the mother do it. Keep it short and interesting. Then do not postpone it when you have visitors. Worship with them. Visitors cannot take the place of God. Bible examples of family worship. Noah prayed with his family in the ark and after the flood. Abraham ordered his family. Job prayed for his children. Joshua said as for me. He said as for him and his family. They would serve the Lord. Parents Create time for your family. Are we together? Unless you pray, unless you help your children to worship and to know the true God. Let me tell you, uh, the Swahili people says, Asie funzwa na mamae. Can you finish? Asie funzwa na mamae. There is a book here called The, the Dark Secrets of the New Age. I don't have time to tell you more about the book. But these are dark secrets of what is happening in the world today. And they say, in whatever they are planning, children will be spiritually seduced and indoctrinated uh, and uh, the classrooms will be used to promote the new age dogma. The whole world is working and gearing towards the new age movement. And very soon, we are going to have the new world order. After all these uh, wars that you see in the whole world, very soon, it will be announced. And the new world order is coming. Not that it is coming, it is already with us. And children in the schools, classrooms will be used. And mark you, they, are, they have already started. For those who, are, who normally want, want to read, and who, those ones who always are aware with the current news, the new world order is with us. The plan is to come of the firmness when the new, the new age Messiah, the Antichrist with the number 666, comes in the fresh to read the unified new age world, is coming to read or to guide or to rule the new age. And with this one, saying that the, the new age world religion oversee the new world order. What will happen? Spirit guides demons will help man inaugurate the new age and will pave way for the Antichrist, the new age man, uh, man God, to be acclaimed by humanity as a great world teacher. This one, you, maybe you cannot get it very quickly. But if you read in your Bible, just write, you'll go and you read at home. That is Revelation 16, 13. The Bible says, Nikaona roho tatu za mashetani. Kisha nikaona roho tatu za mashetani. Can someone read? Can someone read? Can someone read? Impossible usome kwa haraka. Revelation 16, 13. I just want to mention something there. As we pass, Revelation 16, 13, of what is happening now. Kama umepata soma, in any language. Well, naona umefungua Biblia, no one is standing to read. Okay, 
the church karaka is ready Arafu, continue with the other verse. Yohana nasema kisha nikaona roho tatu za mashetani. Revelation 16:13 and 14. Nikaona roho tatu za mashetani. Zikitoka katika kinywa cha yule joka that is the devil kinywa cha mnyama the dragon kinywa cha nabii wa uongo mfano roho zenyewe ni mfano wa viola mahali nilitaka mpate the bible says zilionekana zikiwaendea wafarume wa dunia kuwatayarisha kwa vita ile kuu So mkiona hiyo na msikie watu wanapigana inchi zinapigana all over everywhere people are fighting they are not alone there is another force somewhere na zinawatayarisha kwa vita ya mwisho ambao wamekusanywa mahali panaitwa Hal Magedon Hal Magedon and this is happening ni vile tu i'm not teaching the prophecy but i'm very i'm trying to touch that our families shetani and azizunguka there are only two ordinances in this world that the devil is fighting and want to do away with them one is the family it was made and founded by god before sin the other one is sabbath it was founded by god before sin the two holy ordinances sabbath and family and you people who are seated here you are all sabbatarians so you have the family you have the sabbath if there are any greatest enemy of the devil it's you lakini utakaa tu ukifikiria just go and lead or quote the book of early writings of vg e. white page 266 It is says that the the prophetess E.G. White saw the devil with the meeting the devil conducted his meeting with the angels and the devil told his angels that the churches are asleep all churches all over they are asleep and he said but he said the sect of commandment keepers that we hate the sect kakundi kadogo the sect of commandment keepers that we hate they are injuring our kingdom they are injuring our kingdom all other churches are asleep they don't teach prophecy they don't teach the coming events in the prophecy they cannot even teach simply because they don't know what is that you cannot get any prophecy anywhere or the spirit of prophecy in any church in this world the origins are there but they don't deal with these books especially the book of daniel and the book of revelation even in our church the seventh day adventist church also you'll see a good number don't know what is that and they don't teach even they don't understand even if they are taught some of them cannot grasp it and no you will need to know and the devil told his angels all churches are asleep and if they continue and we continue performing miracles with them we'll get them yet but the sect of commandment keepers we hate they are injuring our kingdom when they appoint any meeting anywhere the devil said we are in danger that is a quotation in 266 267 the spirit of prophecy are writings of eg white and he told his angels go to them cause divisions among them destroy love within them kama kuna watu wanachukiana kwa hii dunia ambao ni wa Kristo ni wa sabato 
We all come to worship na tunakaa as if we are going to heaven now, but you are not ready. But the devil has has already planned and his plan is very clear. Aliambia maraika zake, go to them, cause divisions among them. Destroy love within them. Then he told them, battle every inch. Kionda wiyo ndugu yako unasikia ukasirika. Akipita hivi umeongezea chumvi kwa mwenzako umeroga yeye. Sio lazima uende kitui kutafuta uchawi. Si tuko na wachawi na uchawi tunakaa nao. Let me tell you my brother my sister. In this world kama kuna mtu anakuchukia kuliko watu wote. Mtu ambaye anakuharibia jina, ambaye anakuchukia ya kutosha sio shetani ni wewe mwenyewe kama kuna mtu anakuchukia kupita kiasi ni wewe mwenyewe kama kuna mtu ameenda akipeleka maneno yako nje anakuchafulia jina ni wewe mwenyewe harafu wewe mwenyewe akikutana na wewe mwenyewe watu wawili ambao wanajichukia wanachafuana wenyewe kwa wenyewe and the devil always smiles and he is happy that already you have been destroyed. Wewe ndio ulituambia hujasoma wewe. Ukatuambia hujasoma. Kasema shuleni ulijitahidi ulifika stradi 4 ama ulifika stradi 8 lakini nikatoka. Na nilikuwa mwerevu nilikuwa namba moja. Watu hao wote husema wajasoma hawasahau kusema alikuwa namba moja ama namba mbili. Na sisi hatuna haja kujua ulifika wapi. So by the time pastor is calling us for a church nomination we do the, the elections your name is being mentioned is brought forth for a post of church clerk or a treasurer wale ambao ulituambia hujasoma ndio wa kwanza utasema waachana naye huyu hajasoma waachana naye alituambia hata haelewi na huyu ni bure hawezi treasury nani alituambia hujasoma Simu nijibu hasa mkiniangalia na huruma wote hivi nani alituambia hujasoma ni nani amejichafulia jina ungejua hujasoma na ukijua nyamaza usiharibu jina lako nyamaza just dress well kama ngwana kila mtu haikuona nafikiri you have a master's degree na kumbe hata primary huko maliza kaa ukiwa mungwana you are always very special you are valuable than you, than you think you are also lovable than you think you are healthier than you think wagojwa wote wako ICU na we uko hapa Harafu saa yote ni kutuimbia magojwa magojwa nilikuwa mgojwa the whole of last year nimekuwa mgojwa this year najua ilikuwa i have spent a lot of money even now and you did it yesterday and today you are repeating it again na we angalia wale unaambia vile ulikuwa mgojwa nani hapa alikuwa amesomea udaktari na hata kama alisomea udaktari nani yako na dawa why are you wasting our time and you waste your time just giving us unnecessary story na hiyo hadithi uko nayo all the time wagojwa wakombe kwa jina la Yesu koma ulipewa pumze uhai ya Mungu and you are living you can't die you can't die any any time unapokusikia umefinywa ama huko kwa shida usitoa mawazo ya kufa toa mawazo ya kufa but the devil is with you the devil will help you to be singing that you are almost dying even i don't I, i didn't think that i'll be arrive at this time huko umefikiri ulikuwa umefikiri nini utakufa hiyo mawazo ya kufa ulitoa wapi tradition ni mira za kwetu ni vile watu husema ulisikia watu vile husema but god oriented from family foundation always munaka ukiwa upright it's very very important just understand it and take it sister white says that uh, he told his angels go and fight battle every inch cause divisions cause hatred 
among them. Dishearten their ministers, for we hate them. So they cannot teach you, and we ministers are not connected. We have been disconnected by the devil from, from our church members all the time. Why shiriki wetu mudomo? Mudomo throughout. Ukimaliza pasta kutafuna unatafuna waze. Mukimaliza waze unaingia kwa church board leaders. All the departmental heads. Na ulifundisha hata wale wapi wameingia. Harafu ukimaliza na saire wa shiriki hawako wa kutafunua. Unatafuna muzee mwenyewe kwa nyumba. Maana nafanana na muzee wa kanisa. Harafu tumishiriki tunafanana na wa shiriki tutoto. Sawa na wa shiriki tunatafunua. Wewe tundi umebaki wezi kujitafuna. Lakini na wewe unatafunwa na rafiki yako. Wakati hayuko munatafunana. And now, you are just, you'll just sing here that you are marching to heaven. Let me tell you, the devil has already planned. The devil has a plan. In this book, Dark Secrets of the New Age says, Satan has a plan for one world religion and one world government. We don't have time to read. So the plan for us to overcome all these plans and the snares of the devil, you must have a powerful rivalry family worship in the morning and in the evening. Can someone whisper amen? amen. Hiyo inaka just a foreign word, but uh, you will continue. Can you say amen? Naeza kumuambia ndugu yako amen. Hallelujah. A family board is part of the family government where all members meet. This is pillar number two. A family board, which is very, very important. Family board is part of the family government where all members meet often to discuss issues affecting their families. I have a few minutes. I'll finish this one. Affecting their family. This is where spouses should spend more time together than anywhere else in this world. Just make an appointment, an issue, and make it that you must have a family board every month. If you are married, Ukona family, you the father, you are the chairman of the family board. Then the wife, your wife, mom, you are the secretary. In the absence of the father, mom, you are the chairperson. You are, your children are the board members. Discuss issues together. Teach them how to do the family board. Discuss and let them discuss freely. Let them tell you what they think. Organize every month. Unapanga agenda items. This month we are discussing your mom and the performance in the kitchen. Let them know. Give them an agenda item two days before time. Then next month, Ikifika will discuss their performance in school. Then uh, you continue telling and creating the agenda items. And at times, you'll tell them to give the agenda items. I made a mistake, a mistake sometimes back in 1994. By then, my family, the entire family, we were together. Watoto walikuwa shule. Hapa. Then I made a mistake. We used to do the family boards. Then the katangaza, baraza ni kesho. Na kesho tuta discuss your dad and your mom. Nikaona the young people waliangaliana wakafanyana vidore hivi wakashangilia na nilipoangalia hivi nikaangalia mama kama ameona akaniambia ameona akasema bas waje tuongoje kesho then the following day it was a wednesday when the the right time came almost that time kulingana na jute roster the jute was mine to wash the dishes the utensils in the kitchen. Tunapo kula unaokota. Whoever is on duty, anachukua utensils, unaenda unaosha. Tulikuwa na hizo rosters ambao tumeweka. Kwamba, you are the one to be the mom in the kitchen today. 
Then tomorrow another guy, because we were four men, me and my three sons, four men and one lady, that is my wife. Kwa hivyo tulikuwa tunampa every day one person. Na yeye ndiye atakaye mop kitchen, yeye ndiye atakaye tumwa afanye kazi zote after dinner, yeye ndiye atakaye osha vyombo. So that particular day I was on duty. The young people wakaniambia dad leo tunakusaidia kuosha, kuosha vyombo. Wakachukua and they all went to the kitchen. Nilikuwa nimewaambia jana na nilipoambia kwamba today we have the board they didn't sleep walipoenda kwa bedroom waliongea mpaka saa saba. then that particular day wakakimbia wakaosha haraka rafu the wakaja sasa nikakaa na mke wangu then wamekaa yule mdogo akainua mkono kasema dad i have a proposal kaambia just give it up kasema i'm proposing we change the chairman mimi ndiyo chairman miaka yote. Then he is proposing we change the chairman. Nikasikia kichwa imefungana chwa. Nikasema no. I'm a life member chairman. I always am the chairman in this family. Kasema it is true. It is true dad. You are our chairman. You are our dad. But how can we discuss you and you are the chairman? Utatutawezaje kuwa na freedom? Kasema mtaongea mngitaka mngitaka kuongea mtaongea maana hapa si kesi nilipoanza kujitetea my wife akasema wacha tu wachague hilo wanataka <laughs> then nikakubali and let me tell you nikawaambia wachague yule wa pili aka propose the first born our first born son kasema njuguna kasema okay akiwa hapo akasema yeye hakuongea alijua they had planned and we didn't know then he sat and started discussing wakaanza then wakatoa exercise book ikasoma we are starting with the, with the dad we are starting with the dad ikaanza chwa chwa wakanisomea mambo sita ya kusifu kusifu vile wamejua biblia vile nini whatever vile tunaenda nao vile nini yote sita mazuri ya ajabu hata ikisoma unasikia kweli alistahili kuwa chama na wakae hivi wakasema but we have a concern with these five items wacha zisomwe nikakatwa 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 nimenyamaza na angalia mama yao Alafu naangalia hii tumutu naweza chapa wote na mushipi ni wachape lakini wananifagia kweli kweli. Alafu wanauliza dad wageni wanakuja. Always they normally come wageni. Na wanakuja especially tulipokuwa tunaishi Nairobi, Shauri Moyo, mahali pasa kefa alikuja. Wakaeleza, wakasema wageni ikifika wamekuja. Sisi tunahamishwa mezani hatuwezi kula na wageni obvious na tunaenda kitchen lakini ikifika saa ya kulala tunahamishwa bedroom yetu wageni wanaenda kulala tunahama na matres zetu mpaka kwa jiko harafu kama sio jikoni tutalala mezani maana kuna wakati wageni wanakuja wengi ni shauri moyo it was chaos all through wageni wamecherewa kenyata wa shauri moyo wageni kotini shauri moyo by then walikuwa wanajaa kwetu wageni saba, wageni kumi, all the time hata ilifika siku moja wakaja wageni 29 almost 30 different groups from Meru from Mombasa from Morova toka mama akapika karudia akapika rais aka wana kula ugali wengine wanaingia na pika finally the last uh, the last group tukaenda kununua mikate on our way going mkaongo akaniuliza huwa tunasema wageni ni baraka hata hao wa leo ni baraka kweli nikaenda kwa my neighbor pasta nyumba yetu ilikuwa juu chini kulikuwa na another pasta kwenda huko ili niombe nafasi mahali wa tarara kaniambia wewe angalia kweli hata singe au singeuliza kulikuwa na wageni sijui tisa au kumi na moja. then kwa mwingine hapo tukaja tukapanga wanaume wote mezani 
wa mama kwa bedroom za watoto vijana wetu kwa kitchen na hii watoto watu wote wamejaa kwa nyumba choo ni moja bathroom ni moja na wataenda shule sasa wakatoa even though they didn't quote that one but they quoted the, the, the usual ones ambazo walikuwa wakati mwingine wanarara mezani na wageni wanarara huko haravu wanasema wakati si tunaenda kurara mezani dadi wao wanakaa na wageni mezani mpaka saa sita. na wakati anapoeleza wengine hawa wanasema shuari yani kuongeza chumvi Shuari, arabu anauliza na tutaenda shule kesho asubuhi. Sasa tunauliza, kweli nyumba hii ni yetu ama ni guest house? Na yule mwingine anasema, hata mimi hushangaa sana. <laughs> Sijaongea, lakini tunafiekwa. Arabu akaendelea kutufieka. Shule zikifungwa, dadu unatuchukua. Tunaenda kericho. Maana umeitwa kwenda kuhubiri. Na ni wewe umeitwa, sisi hatujaitwa. Na serikali inajua wakati kama huu ni wa holiday ni wa holiday ili tupumzike umeenda na sisi na tukienda huko we are idle na hatuwezi beba vitabu and by then siku na gari wakieleza hiyo unasikia yule mwingine anasema hata mimi ushangaa tutapumzika lini hiyo ikanijaza kikombe mpaka hapo waliponimaliza kabisa wakageukia mama wakasifu mama mpaka hapo Arafu wakaingia. Hiyo nimewaambia ni ile kidogo, ile kali siwezi kusema na huwa sisemi. Arafu wakageuka mama. Kauliza sisi tunashangaa mama. Sisi tuko katika juti ya kuosha vyombo na sisi ni waaminifu. Uli tufundisha. Na hatuwezi pata mama mzuri kama wewe akasifiwa. Kauliza lakini shida yetu ni moja. Vyombo viko hapa. Dining sets. Baka watu watoke conference ndio zitolewe hapa ndio watumie ama wageni ambao ni wenye sifa wanatumia the dining set sisi tunatumia vyombo ovyo ovyo na haturuhusiwi kuosha hizi lakini tuko kwa jute kuosha hizi zetu sasa tunauliza mtuambie nyinyi wazazi wetu na hasa wewe mam hizi vyombo ni za kina nani yule mwingine anauliza hivyo ndivyo mimi uliza siku zote Mama alipofia kwa ya kwanza akafia kwa ya pili ya tatu akasema kae ni hiyo na maneno yenu naenda kulala ati anaondoka kwenda kula nikamwambia kaa chini kaa chini uliniambia nipeane chairmanship waja tufiekwe Alan me tell you tulifiekwa na watoto wakimaliza pale chini wakasema we are doing this in love no one will tell you your mistakes sisi ni watoto wenu na tunawaambia ili mreform ukweli mtupu na sijasahau 1994 that particular evening tulifiekwa tulipotoka kwenda kulala hatukulala tulirudia kurevise hiyo madhambi yote yote tumefanya tukaeleza maana mimi nilifiekwa mama huja siku zote kutuona shuleni visiting all the time anakuja kila mwezi na anatuletea dad tunajua una shughuli mingi za kwenda kuhubiri lakini watoto wengine wanashangaa sisi hatuna baba ninafiekwa lazima tuambatane wote wawili ndi wajulikane wana baba kasema tulipoenda kurara tukaongea mama akaniambia tuvunje hiyo family board tusiwe tunaongea nika nikamwambia hapana wacha tufiekwe ili tutengeneza that particular friday it was on a wednesday that particular friday dining set ilitolewa set moja chakula iko hapo Wote mama ameweka hapo kila mtu achukue ile sahani alafu asafu kila mmoja alafu yule yako jute aende aoshe tulireform mara moja na tukaambiana wakati wo wote am going out kama wamefunga shule wakae sitabebana nao kama wa... tena tulijua kumbe they are of age we used to go with them while they were young but now these are grown men na wanashangaa tunaenda nao kufanya nini hatungejua mpaka walipotuambia family board is very important make agenda items discuss all issues and they will tell you mambo ambayo hatutakwambia maana ndugu muro nikikwambia ndaona labda utakasirika katakwambia nikatotokako hata ukapiga katakwambia this is very important 
And since our time is up, tomorrow we'll continue with the family pillars and we'll discuss on communication. We'll discuss on communication. These are among the family pillars. Then uh, on more time, how you can create more time. Hakuna haja wende kukacheze mpira. Hakuna haja wende kukacheze darts. Huko na watu wengine. Wakati una watu kwa nyumba yako, watoto wako. Make time to stay with your children. Teach them na ufanye kama ni kuongea, ongea nao. Imba mfoma family choir. Mwimbe wimbo hata kama hamuta imba kanisani. It's not necessary for you to come and sing here. We have a church choir. Imbeni kwa nyumba yenu. Our heavenly father is listening. Make use of that. Na utashanga. Wakati watakapo ondoka. They will be missing the family choir. They will be missing the family board. They will be missing the family Bible study. Hapo ndipo wazazi tumeanguka. Andika Hebrews 2 verse 13. Ukienda nyumbani, enda utaona. Kwamba the time will come when Jesus comes. You will be asked to stand with your family. Kama watoto wako hawako, hakukuwa na haja wewe kuza watoto. Adventist home says that before you bring any child on earth, first of all you too discuss. Will you be able to handle this child spiritually, umfundishi aweze kuelewa. If the answer is yes, the second question, will he be able to handle her or him or feed him physically? Umfundishi physically, ale, atosheke, avae vizuri, aonekana ni mtoto mzuri. Then the last one, mentally. The three aspects. Spiritually, physically, and mentally. Kama mtaweza uyo mtoto kwa mambo hayo. Mentally asome, afike mahali inafaa. Tena asome shure nzuri. Usikai hapa unafanya, unashugulika. You are working very hard. Ato unatafutia watoto chakura. Hau wote na hukufanyua oda ya watoto. Umewalete na si oda ulipewa. Kwa hivyo, Ukama mutaungana you mom and dad. Munaungana munarete katoto duniani. Then mujitayarisha kuenda binguni. Muache katoto maana kamekua. Jeshi la shetani. You will pay for it. Na wazazi wengi. Many parents will miss heaven. Because of their children. Don't take it for granted. Haka kandume kako kwa nyumba. Sahi ni kadogo hivi. Take time. Make a good foundation of that little kid. Mana, 20 years or 30 years to come, atakuwa baba ya mutoto ingine. Na atatumia the same foundation ambao alipata. We always say like father. Kwa nini usiseme na nguvu? Like father. Sasa wewe umetua mpangogani kwa baba. In this world, is only you man who has been around kuitua baba. In this world. Binguni baba ni moja. Duniani baba ni moja, wewe. You are an abasenda on earth, ukiakirisha mungu baba. You are the abasenda in this earth, ukiakirisha mungu baba. Kwa hivyo baba elewa, you have a major role to help your children to know Jesus. Na uweze wakati wanaimba, imba now. Soma bibiria, cheza now, toka inje now. Go out and maybe you want to go out somewhere with your family. Toka nao wate. Harafu kama hali na kijana wako mfundishe. At times, lete wata pamoja mkiwa na mama. Wafundishie uko. Na watamis. Siku hile watatoka kwenu. Watamis wakati ule mulika pamoja. Si na waze wengi wameko kwa shimo. Na wake zao. Mama ameona. Kitoto kimerusha mawe kimegonga. Kimegonga rabda nyumba ya wenyewe. Kimerusha mawe rabda kimegonga ngombe ama kuku. Na kumkanya, we, we ngoja, mama yako, baba yako atakuja, we. Then the time comes, umeroga tayari katoto, baba yako wakija utaona. Kenyewe uko moyoni kanaomba, baba asije. Kameanza kukuroga usije. Nani amekaharibu mama. Wakati baba amefika, kamestuka. Harafu mama anachukua kama pampu ya baiskeri. Shhh. Anaanza kupampu mwanaume. Shhh. Haka rusha mawe. Haka fanya. Halifanya hivi. Nini mukanya. 
na hasiki na lizeri naendelea kuwekwa pumzi linaendelea kupanuka kama baruni linaendelea kuja kwa moyo na arafu anasema na mimi na shanga nauliza hii nyumba kwani ina wanaume wangapi hiyo mzee anaona vile yeah, he is the head of the family ni kama anafutwa kazi mama sasa hiyo anapambwa na pam inajaa ni mwanaume linamkuja hapa kuja hapa lete kiboko mwanaume amechemuka hakuona jiwe hakujua sababu ni gani harafu yeye ndiye anapigana na yule ndiye aliona na hakumuguza lizeli na chapa kwa hasira linachapa Arafu katoto kanalia wewe ila kanalia arafu mama anasema sasa amesikia nilikuambia utaona nilikuambia sasa amesikia muache sasa niwauze kanisa nane aliona mtoto akirusha mawe nane aliona nani alichochea lakini nani alikuwa karibu kuua mtoto nani nani muokozi Mwanaume umewekwa uwe mtoto, arafu baba wanakaa kuua mtoto, mama anakuwa mwokozi. Mama aliona, mama amechochea, mama ameokoa. Wewe hukuona, huko tayari kuua. Miaka yote watoto hawatakupenda wewe baba. Ndio unaona watoto wanakaa kwa mama. Wewe nilimtu la kuwekwa pam, unawekwa pumzi, unaendelea kufura, arafu unataka kuua. Harafu ugali inapikwa hapa ikiweko unasikia mama anasema kwanza kateni ugali ya baba yenu nusu ya ugali inaenda kwa baba Harafu watoto watatu ama wawili na mama wanabaki na nusu Tutoto tunaangalia tunashangaa Harafu kukaa muda usio mrefu na wewe unaona unarogwa na mama unakaa hapo unamenyana na ugali unamaliza yote Watoto wanasema Nani ajana alikuwa karibu auwe mama baba Nani juzi alikuwa karibu aniue baba Nani ameua ugali <laughs> Sasa mwanaume unaisha for nothing tusimame tuombe tusimame tuombe Let's pray Dear Lord in heaven, we want to thank you so much for bringing us this far. We want to thank you for the numerous lessons that we have learned today. We still ask you that you impress the words upon our hearts. You may teach us that which is worthy of us emulating, dear Lord. And now I ask you that even as we depart to our various places of stay and residence, we pray that you grant us journey mercies. And even as we continue with our lessons here tomorrow, we pray that may you bring us back safe. Our desire is that we may meet you in heaven, dear Lord. I pray that you may prepare us for your soon return kingdom. May your will continuously be done upon us. For these are humble requests, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen.